What's going on, folks? This is Mr. Colin Noir joining you for another episode of Seeing Live on this beautiful Thursday. I would be about a day and a half, two days away from uh, from the elections, and um, things are so peaceful and quiet now. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, with that being said, joining me live today is going to be Bob Owens from Bearing Arms. What's going on, Bob? How's it going? I'm doing good, doing good. You know, I'm just enjoying the peace and quiet that is the after elections. And, you know, just enjoying life for the most part. Yeah, you know, th th there's nothing wrong with a few crackling bonfires in urban areas and things <laughs> like that. Just to kind of let you chill out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love warm fires and marshmallows and toasties and all that other good stuff. But no. Um, so I kind of want to talk about uh, a perspective that a lot of people don't really have. Um, and, I, and I think that's the kind of uh, the journalistic side of the gun world. Um, in many ways, I think it, it doesn't get enough attention in a lot of ways because I, I frequent your blog pretty often um, along with others. And, you know, you guys generally do a really good job of keeping basically people informed with information that they usually wouldn't get from other places. It, it, it's really hard to get a lot of pro-gun info, even on the Internet for, for all intents and purposes, um, and I feel for people who don't even or aren't even aware of a lot of the blogs that are out there um, and are trying to find this information. So what, what, when you set out to start your blog, what was your overall goal? Well, what was fun about Bearing Arms is it wasn't mine to begin with. Gotcha. Bearing Arms is, is, is part of the whole town hall media empire. Mm. And so what they needed is a couple of years back, they were looking for somebody to run it. But they were kind of trying to keep the job description on the down low. And uh, I was out on Twitter one day and goofing off, as I'm wont to do. And I said, does anybody want to hire me to write about guns for a living? And lo and behold, Katie Pavlich from Town Hall saw that oh, and directed it to me and said, actually, we're kind of looking for somebody. <laughs> and so I've been running Bearing Arms ever since. It's a little over three years now. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I used to blog for a period of time. Um, my blog's still up there, but um, I don't do it as often anymore just because of all the other multitasking and stuff that I do. Um, mm -hmm. At this point, though, wh wh where do you see the blog world going um, now that Donald Trump has been he's the president elect and will be taking office soon? I, I, how do you how do you see things playing out? Do you do you think they're going to turn it up? Do you think it's they're going to kind of quiet down and kind of go by go by the wayside? Or I mean. Well, I, I think you're going to see a couple of different things, you know, depending on whether you're looking at the pro-gun or anti-gun perspective. Mm -hmm. um, pro-gun blogs in general seem to be going to be more organized, uh, slight, I won't say corporate necessarily, yeah. uh, but, but they're being recognized as viable forms of, of media. And so people are pumping a lot more money into them to, to, to making them, um, you know, a little slicker, having more content, having various outlets uh, you know, they may even have guys on, on TV shows from time to time. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, th there's a lot of that going on. Uh, on the opposite side, you know, we do have Bloomberg putting stuff up like The Trace, mm -hmm. uh, which is his anti-gun website uh, run by a mobster's daughter, which is kind of interesting in its own right. Um, and so we've got all sorts of different things going on as you know, we're, what, a day and a half in yeah. to Trump being president-elect now. And it's, it's kind of hard to see where it's going to go just yet. You know, the dust has hardly settled. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's still people out there like Lady Gaga who are trying to contest the election. Uh, Lady Gaga can't figure out if she's even a human, much less. Try to, I, 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 I just I yeah. just don't understand a lot of that. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, I think I think in many ways, like, I remember, I, I feel like I lucked up a little bit because when I kind of started on my path, um, there was already a wealth of information out there. Um, there were a lot of blogs out there that I could kind of pull resources from. And mm -hmm. for me, that was, that was invaluable. Um, and, and I know now, like you said before, now it's just kind of, in many ways, kind of taken off and it become its own media outlet in itself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's incredible because, you know, there's so much misinformation out there about firearms in general. And then there's just so many new people coming into the sport, coming into the culture who want to know as much as possible about guns. And actually, I mean, I, got, I get messages quite, quite often like, where can I go to learn about this? Where can I go to figure this out or get the information on this, so forth and so on? So I, I think it's pretty awesome that we now have those options that we have now. 
Yeah, and, and we're seeing a lot of that, and that's actually, you know, I'm seeing a lot of the same things you are, and it's shaping the way we cover news. Yeah. Uh, when we first started, or when I first started at Bearing Arms, it was, you know, here's a gun story. We're going to pretty much just reprint AP copy type stuff. <laughs> and, and now, you know, you, you go out, you do the research, you go and do the training like you do, mm -hmm. and you get more education so that you can turn around and, 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 and tell people, look, if you're going to get a gun, you know, you also need to get the education on how to use that firearm safety, you know, what kind of context you can use it in, uh, especially when we're talking about self-defense. Yeah. And and so we try to do as much education as we do re reporting as much as we can. A lot of times we'll have a news story where we will start out and just kind of give you the straight facts and then try to give some context to it to try to inform our readers. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, let's let's talk about this election. Um Outright, what, what were your general thoughts? It was really fascinating. This is the fourth election, presidential election, I've really paid attention to as, as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, it really kind of blew me away about 10 o'clock <laughs> when polls started closing, you know, 10 o'clock Eastern. Yeah. And the polls started closing, and races that everybody projected would, would go to Clinton right away didn't, like yeah. Virginia. And the longer they lingered, the more it seemed that the polls were going to be really, really off. Yeah. Was it going to be enough for Trump to win? I don't know. And then Wisconsin didn't come in, which was supposed to go hard to Clinton. Yep. And so when things did not break her way as expected, you saw the entire tone, uh, especially in the mainstream media, shift to one of panic. I it, it, it was kind of this almost controlled panic. It was, it was, it's like it was like watching somebody fall from a building slowly and then in, in every minute they can they know the inevitable outcome and they're just like <laughs> and, yeah. and I, I remember I, I I didn't really start paying attention to around the same time as you um, it was about 10 ish 10 30 central time um, mm -hmm. and to be honest with you like I, I just considered even when I saw it, things were going in his way I thought, okay, when the other states start coming in, it'll, you know, the numbers will start to flip flop and change up a little bit. And I was actually thrown aback because they were, they were so somber and calm. Mm -hmm. And when I was watching, when I flipped back to like CNN, that I, I was like, okay, maybe they know something we don't. Because yeah. right, right now, you guys spent the entire election telling us how there's no way in hell Donald Trump is going to win this. Yet, yeah. right now, I'm looking at the numbers and it's telling a different story. And you guys are there like deer in headlights. And I'm like, I don't know if that's panic. Or just absolute uh, confidence. But as you said, as the numbers started to continue to trickle in, then you started to see the eyes get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they started crying. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, I think it was probably midnight around here once we started realizing that this was not Hillary's race to win, but it was Trump's race, race to lose. Yeah. And once that started happening, you know, and we're, we're you know, being part of town hall political stuff. We're pretty plugged in over here, and so we're watching this, and we're like, "Oh my goodness, he's gonna really, he's got really <laughs> shot at pulling this off." And then, you know, once we saw Virginia, he barely pulled Virginia. Yeah. Uh, when Florida went red, when North Carolina went red, we realized, "Oh my goodness, he's gonna pull this out. He's actually got this." And from then on, it was just a full on. Four alarm fire for CNN and MSNBC, and, and, and it was glorious to watch this on Twitter <laughs> as it went down. And it was like he was watching the two sides. There was this kind of like calm somberness in one on one end, and then on the other side, there was almost like this contained excitement. We're kind of like, I don't want to, I don't want to get too happy here, but no, it was. I hate to say, it, but it was truly epically entertaining. It, it, it was. I mean, it <laughs> like, was. You're 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 watching people who expected one thing yep. all of a sudden end up in, in their own little version of the Truman show. <laughs> and you know, suddenly they become the entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> You're so uh, right. I, yeah, I, I had a blast. Wild. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I couldn't help it. And then I went off to a bar somewhere to finish watching it. And then all the people there largely considering I was in Dallas, which is weird. Most of them were like, Oh my God, like this is, I can't believe this. Like, you know, hands on head, you know, they're already inebriated. So that was another issue. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, it was, it was very, very entertaining to watch. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but uh, when we come back, I kind of want to talk about some of the uh, priorities that you see as uh, the community, the, the gun community is concerned, what we should be focused on now. So we'll be back. 